We've been talking about how much meat we should include in our diet. We're back with Dr. David Katz, Dr. Joel Kahn, and Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. So let's bridge the gap here a little bit because I do think that there is a truth out there. And I think we would all agree overly processed foods to begin with, bad, right? Would we all agree that overly processed foods? Yeah. Yes, yes. Now, just so you know, and I think this is important, I eat meat. I enjoy red meat. I come from a family of farmers in Nebraska who, you know, I, that was what I grew up with. I'm more passionate about this because of where I grew up in the Midwest and, and now living in the South and the rates of obesity. If you look at the headlines, I think that we need to be teaching people we need to focus on more plant-based. And, and yes, talk to your doctor, make sure you're getting enough protein, particularly if you have sarcopenia and muscle wasting. That can start in your 30s. So you, it's all about optimal body composition. So if we begin to further reduce red meat, and I just, I personally, and in my clinic, I haven't seen it to negatively impact people. I've only seen it to be a positive. And yet I look at you, Dr. Kana, you haven't had meat in 42 years, you look healthy. Dr. Lyon, you eat meat and you advocate it and you look healthy. I had a, I had a baby healthy. two months ago. Oh, congrats. So, <laughs> you know, it worked. And yeah, and that's my point is I, I, there is a happy medium here. And so for the general population, and Dr. Katz, I want to go back to you because we could talk about this for hours upon hours. But where I really respect you, Dr. Katz, is you've spent your career trying to dive into the actual science. You started the True Health Initiative. I'm a big fan of it. It's about getting out to the masses what we know to be true. And the truth is usually somewhere in the middle because most people realistically aren't gonna give up meat. Mm -hmm. Or well, the, do they necessarily well, have well, to? Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and I think exactly. that's the important And, and point. I think even, well, even Joel would agree there that a truly vegan diet, especially for long, as long as you've done it, not everybody can do that. So Let, I think clear, that's an though, important point. There were never dietary guidelines that said, eat all the snack wells you want and all will be well. All sensible dietary guidelines in our country have been co-opted by big food and turned into nonsense. And you can do that with meat, where advice to eat lean, healthy, whole meat turns into have all the pepperoni pizza you want. And advice about eating more plants turns into as long as it's low fat, it doesn't matter if it's snack wells. All of that's nonsense. That's pop culture nonsense. Those aren't dietary guidelines. So the reality is the world's best diets from a vast array of evidence, and, and this is what the True Health Initiative experts from all around the world rally around, there, there's a theme there. And the basic theme, Michael Pollan said it nicely, eat food, not too much, mostly plants. You know, in Joel's case and, and largely in mine, it's all plants. It doesn't have to be. You can be pescatarian, flexitarian, Mediterranean. There are all sorts of variants on the theme, even paleo. All of these things come together and argue for less meat. I agree. Everyone should eat more plants. I totally agree with that. But what happens when you tell the average American to eat, you know, more plants, it's going to be potatoes. It's not spinach and broccoli and leafy greens. So now we further reduce a healthy food source and we end up replacing it with excess you know, processed carbohydrates and, and fat. Unfortunately, we do have to end the conversation, but the beauty of all this is we are doctors talking about the importance of nutrition. We've always said this, food is medicine. Is. You have to figure out what works for you. But maybe the other lesson in this conversation is be very careful when you read a headline. And also talk to people who are knowledgeable. Please have a conversation with your doctor. If you're dealing with specific issues to you, talk to your doctor about what may be the optimum diet for you. But unequivocally, and this is where I, I will close this out, I, I agree with you, Dr. Katz, your comment, um, Michael Pollan said it, right? Say it one last time. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. And I think that's pretty good that's advice right. for the majority you should, of us. If you're not doing that, you should try it and listen to your body, and you may be surprised how much better you feel and do it in concert with your physician. I respect all three of you. Thank you so much for being here today, sharing your perspective with Dr. Ryan, Dr. Katz, Dr. Khan. Thanks for having us. The other thing I will add is if you're gonna make a drastic change to your diet, please, you, you do need to make sure you're getting all the required nutrients. Particularly, we talk about women mm -hmm. who are childbearing age, maybe children. Yes, absolutely. There's no one size fits all diet. You have to figure out what the right diet is for you.